Yep, what you just saw was our brand new couch. We have been ordering a lot of stuff for our house still and they've just been slowly trickling in. So I thought I would save them all in one go and do a little mini home unboxing with you. This sofa is by Rove Concepts. Rove Concepts is a Canadian brand that just launched in Hong Kong. This one is called the Porter Sectional Grande. There is a larger version of it, but my living room is relatively compact compared to a lot of the Canadian living rooms. Ours is a two-seater with a Ottoman extension to make it into an L shape. What we love about this sofa is that it came in three pieces, so it's very easy to move into our elevator and into our house. If it doesn't fit in the elevator, you gotta pay for delivery up the stairs and every flight of stairs costs money. This sofa is relatively low profile, so if you're looking for more back support, I wouldn't really recommend it, but it does come with four cushions that you can place in the back to offer more back support. We use only two of them because we find that four kind of just clutters the aesthetic and we like how clean and marshmallow like this sofa is. My next purchase is something I already did on Instagram stories, but it is my new tabaret stool I got from a auction house. This one is a Spanish tabaret vintage stool from the 60s or 70s. I love how compact it is and it comes with the three legs that you just screw onto the base itself. It even comes with the original sticker and I thought it would make a great addition with my wicker stool as mini side tables or coffee tables where I can put our drinks on. Next is this gift I received from Lynn Crawford. These are the new Loewe Candles Home Fragrances. We chose the fragrance in Honeysuckle and in what was it? Beetroot and they're supposed to resemble scents from your vegetable garden. The packaging is so pretty and it also comes with one ceramic candle base. I kind of wish there were two so I can burn them at the same time, but this is also made in Spain in this beautiful black base with the logo in the back. The collection does come in a bunch of colors and we actually went by the scent that we liked as opposed to the aesthetic color, but ours is the yellow one and the purple one. As you guys know, I've been using Sonos since around 2016-17 when I splurged on my first Play 1. I recently just received the Beam Gen 2 version. We have been using the Gen 1 since 2019. We haven't configured it to our TV system yet, but I just opened it. This is obviously not a tech review, but the great thing about the Gen 2 is that it comes in plastic as opposed to the original one, which is in fabric, so it makes it easier to clean. It comes with Dolby Atmos sound, and it does come in a slightly whiter shade of white compared to the Gen 1, which I will put some B-roll on top to show you. And obviously it pairs with the rest of our Sonos collection so we can listen to music around the house. This item right here I purchased off of eBay. It took a couple of weeks to get here from the States. I've been wanting to get a few more decorative items for the house that were not just from H&M and from Zara, but it's really hard to find any vintage stores in Hong Kong, which is why I had to order it off of eBay. I honestly should stop buying decorative items right now because we do have a few furniture pieces that we still need, like the console and the TV stand, but I always get distracted when I start doing research for a homeware and I ended up getting a decorative piece instead of furniture. So this is the Stargazer sculpture from Austin Productions made in the 1980s by David Fisher. And I love this version because it comes in this really nice matte stoneware glaze and it's just really pretty. I think will look really nice on my shelf. I love this whole head bust trend that's happening on, in the interior world, but I didn't want something so literal and I feel like she is very soft and feminine and she's got that very biomorphic kind of aesthetic to her. And I love how she looks different on every angle. And last but not least of this homeware haul are our cable boxes from Taobao. We have a lot of cables that run through our house and we want to keep it very uncluttered and neat, so we bought these ones. The great thing about this is that it comes in a lot of very aesthetic pastel colors as well as neutrals. Ours is the beige and we got a white one that I think would match our floors really well. And we love this like rich kind of texture which makes it very pretty. 
but also a great way to store our cables. There's holes in the top as well on the sides so the cables can run above and below. The only problem we have with this one is that not all our cables fit in here, including our MacBook charger. So we're still trying to reconfigure it so that everything fits inside here. This is the first one. So I think most of you have already finished the show Squid Game. We finished our last episode last week during our staycation. So we thought we'd jump on this TikTok trend of making Dalgona, but then their own twist is with iced, iced coffee. For me, I got these cookie cutters from last year for my Christmas cookie uh, photo shoot. I have one from Chanel and a Nike one, and I thought I would incorporate that into making the Dalgona this time, although it's plastic, so I don't know how well it would work. But Dalgona, if you don't know already, is made from melting sugar, adding a bit of baking soda into it. However, last night we did have an AC leaking problem in our bedroom, so we, we were up until like two something dealing with that, so we're both a bit tired this morning. Hopefully when we make the candy, we won't burn ourselves because we're both a bit loopy in the head still. But anyways, let's head to the kitchen. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how to make Dalgona. A lot of people say you don't need the Amazon kit, you can actually use a ladle to make it and all you need is a bit of sugar and baking soda. This will act as my circle on the back of this Sakura and yeah, let's start. Making our fifth Algona, we just tried shooting the video with Victor's espresso. The cookie was actually thicker than what we imagined, and we thought the cookie would immediately drop into the espresso, which it didn't. So I'm gonna try making another one and making it thinner, and so that the time in between each shot is faster. I thought this cookie would not be as thick, but it literally 30 seconds of spilled espresso right here.
Happy birthday.